cheat sheet here. Um, <laughs> our next participant is Black P Plague Brewing. Your three minutes begins now. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good afternoon. So this all started for us with four friends dreaming about owning and operating a craft brewery. We've been talking about our love for craft beer for several years, and we all got together and decided we should team up and start Black Plague Brewing. Uh, Philip, our brewmaster, is a neuroscientist and award-winning home brewer. So we have taken an experimental approach to brewing, taproom operation, merchandising, advertising, and just about everything we do. So we're always looking for ways to incrementally improve our processes and looking to get constructive feedback and criticism from all of you. Um, uh, Dark Plague, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we're going to have uh, integrated social media campaigns because we understand that beer is social and ha has an a embedded social element to it. So our tap room is going to feature self-serve taps, secret taps, communal tables, uh, photo, photo booths, and one-minute dance parties, and a lot of other fun activities. Um, so the, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, our branding is going to feature the Plague Doctor, is kind of the centerpiece overall. You can see on our bottles, our tap handles, packaging, soft goods, um, we're really trying to highlight the, the tie-in to the dark ages in terms of uh, not being able to produce good quality water, so brew houses started popping up and, and beer was kind of the main thing that everybody drank. Uh, we like the idea of that. And in addition to... Um, the, the branding there, we'll, we will have a standard portfolio of about nine to 10 beers that'll be available year round, ranging from darker stouts and porters all the way to the lighter citrus pale ales. Uh, we'll also have a seasonal rotating menu of about four to five beers that'll include some sours for the more adventurous craft beer drinkers. And, but however, our initial, sorry, our initial offering will include the citrus pale ale, the stout, and the black IPA. Uh, moving on to our growth strategy, so our focus is going to be locally on our brewery and tap room in northern San Diego County. It's going to be an indoor-outdoor dog-friendly space. It's going to host uh, events and fundraisers for the local community. We will also, or we're also in discussions with uh, contract brewers in northern and southern California to augment our production facility in San Diego County. Um, that will focus on California to start in a one-state experiment. We're also in discussions with distributors for local San Diego County as well as northern region, as well as additional distribution in 22-ounce bottles in Nevada and kegs and bottles in California. In addition to that, we're also in discussions with a commercial real estate developer who will help us create affiliate tap rooms in Arizona to help us expand into the retail space more quickly. And uh, lastly, the beer that you're drinking is a citrus pale ale. It has a 7% ABV, 20 IBUs. It's got a golden orange appearance with a white uh, head on it. And it tastes of candied grapefruit with uh, sweet bread pudding and has a fruity citrus aroma to it. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. A round of applause for Black Plague. Go. All right, so I'll start with Michael this time. We'll work the opposite way. Uh, what do you think of the, uh, the brand Black Plague? Uh, you know, certainly pretty grim and, and dark. Yeah. You, do you like it? Why did you call it Dark Plague when you skipped there for a second? So originally we started out with Dark Ages was the name of the brand. Okay. Uh, we ran into some trademark infringement issues. Uh, there was another brewery that had some uh, beers with that brand. So we pivoted, uh, sticking with the same theme. We like the imagery and the feel of that. So wanted to stay kind of counterculture and we thought Black Plague would... Definitely would has like a very curious look to it, right? Like, I'm, like it's not an image you're used to seeing very much. Even within beer, which is known for some fairly dark images, uh, it still has a lot of clarity and, and kind of iconic, but you don't really know what it is and what it's about. I think plague is a very polarizing word to use, and so if you can back that up with something interesting, I think you might be onto something. <laughs> right. We, um, we like the idea of it spreading virally, so we're, we're tying it <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Viral's a good word. Um, <laughs> Pandemic. You know that. So I think that's interesting, right? Like, you could use that to your advantage, or it can work against you if you're not doing it very, you know, very smart. It sounds like you have a, your head wrapped around how that might play out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, we, we intend to take a very methodical approach, like... Uh, I think Matt and others have said earlier this morning that yeah. we want to be very uh, quantifiable and measuring everything that we're doing, yeah. so that, that's part of the It approach. feels interesting that it, it sounds like it has an exclusivity or social virality kind of component to it, but the beers themselves feel very, very mainstream, and like it feels like that kind of refreshed brew pub portfolio. 
Uh, I don't know about the, I have questions about the alignment of that um, and how that plays out over time, or maybe you have bigger ideas for some of the more specialty stuff. And, and Tommy, how about here in, in San Diego? Um, is this, I mean, there's, you know, 100 plus breweries here in, in the county. Is this enough to kind of stick out from, from some of the stalwarts? Just to be clear, I'm not going to die from drinking this. Okay. <laughs> no, you're good. Okay, it's, good. It's I just want to make sure that. that um, <laughs> It was interesting because it wasn't until you got to the third part of your slide where I even realized you guys were from San Diego, and I apologize for not knowing that up front. Um, it's difficult to be in this environment here and succeed. Um, I question the sense of a 7% alcohol, 20 IBU beer, um, and being able to be shelf-stable and stick out in this environment that way. Uh, I will back up the branding I thought was interesting and the, the iconicness of that, that image you created, um, and it was very clean. So there is some opportunity there. The, pe the plague piece was a little bit of a... Okay, and uh, but 7% alcohol, 20 IBU pale ale, uh, it's a tough road to hoe in this town. Um, and the, the contract brewing approach, you know, later on, um, Carmen and Ben, I mean, this is something that you guys are pretty familiar with. Yeah. Uh, you do some contract brew uh, yourself uh, for other partners. Um, do you think that's a smart way to go about uh, ex expanding? I, I think it lends itself to a, a good safety net um, initially to to see if the brand has some sustainability out there. You're not throwing a bunch of CapEx at it and rolling the dice and, and going heavily into debt or being yeah, in debt to others. So yeah, there, there, there's a good uh, practicalness to, to that route. And uh, Tom, final word. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily have one. You know, I think that, uh, like I said, it, it, my concern would be that the Black Plague is somewhat of a negative connotation, you know, in terms of a name. And, you know, it'll turn some people on, it'll probably turn some people off. Like you said, it's polarizing. So, it, uh, you know, as long as the product backs it up, then it's okay. But, you know, I think that, like you said, it's a potential pitfall. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Appreciate it.